Uh, greetings, friends. It's, it's good to have you with us this, this Monday night for our open forum. May the Lord richly bless you as we have this time of our sharing together. Uh, for you who are with us regularly, you, uh, you've heard this announcement many times, but for you who may be uh, just now finding us on Ustream or YouTube in whatever country or whatever part of this country you may be in, we welcome you. These programs come to you through the facilities of the mid, mid, uh, Midwest, isn't it? I keep wanting to say Mid-South. Midwest, Center for Truth, here in the Ozark Mountains, just out of Leslie, Arkansas. And we, we're, we're, glad to, we're glad for a place where we are at liberty not only to search for the truth, but declare the truth as the truth is in Christ, as the truth is Christ. These sessions come to you as a ministry of CMI Bible Research Center, and they are a production of CMI Audio and Video Network System, brought to you, as I've already said, on Ustream, and also YouTube. So we're just glad to be with you tonight. We have been discussing three particular scriptural terms that relate to our salvation, relate to our union with Christ. Uh, Christ himself is not only the fulfillment, but the very reality and substance of each of these terms, just as he is the reality and substance of our salvation. The terms are new birth, uh, which we have discussed in previous uh, uh, forums. Uh, the second term is baptism, and the third is adoption. Uh, we're looking at them in that order just for the sake of teaching. Uh, each of these terms represent and are bound up in the person of Christ. They're bound up in one salvation, but they are very distinct works of the Holy Spirit in bringing the believer into that union with Christ that the Father hath planned, purposed from before the foundation of the world. So we dealt uh, most all uh, last Monday night with baptism, and we'll just start there and then and then go on from there. I wanted to read you some term, uh, some scripture here, with regard to this baptism, uh, and uh, if you remember. Oh, we just uh, Rabin was just reminding me we were talking about the baptism as it relates to what Peter said in his epistles concerning the flood. And that was, in my opinion, just a, a tremendous sharing uh, last uh, Monday night. Uh, Matthew 3, 11 through 12. Uh, this is... John speaking, uh, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is better than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner but he will burn up the shaft with unquenchable fire remember that our baptism uh, 
is with spirit and with fire. Our baptism is into a union with the Lord Jesus Christ and our baptism has to do with the very fire, the very cleansing nature, the very cleansing uh, character, the very cleansing substance of Christ. Term fire, but but it's worthy for us to just think about because when most people in the church world, or I guess maybe in any world, think about baptism, it is always related to water, just being baptized in into water. But and John indeed was baptizing into water when he said that the one who is coming, and he's referring to the Lord Jesus himself, we know that, who is, who, who is coming, and how does he put that? Uh, he that cometh after me, after <coughs> me. John here is representing the whole summation of the law and of the prophets. Tremendous witness of Christ given here in John. How that we come from one arrangement, one orderly arrangement, translated one world, one world, uh, one covenant, yes, one age, yes. All of that which ends with the coming of Christ, ends with the cross. But John here is talking about baptism, coming here from one <coughs> understanding of baptism, maybe from one purpose of baptism to another baptism all together, to another world, to another covenant. So there's more than just a fulfillment of the old being spoken of here. Christ is more than just a fulfillment of the old. He virtually takes away the old and he establishes in himself the new. This is the baptism we're talking about, one that relates to that which he establishes in himself. And the effects of this baptism I think never cease because the work of Christ as the reality of the fire of God, the fire upon the altar, whether it's the brazen altar or the altar of incense, the pillow of fire, a cloud in the day, but that same pillow that was a cloud in the day is a, is a pillow of fire in the night. It is Christ himself. Christ is the spirit into which, into union with which we are brought by baptism. These are not just suppositions on, on my part. Now, look at Mark, because we continue. And Jesus relates this baptism directly to the cross. Directly to the cross. 
Please remember, honey, that the cross is directly related to the altars of the tabernacle and of the temple. The cross is directly related to the brazen altar. It is directly related, or should I say these altars are directly related to the cross. The brazen altar, the golden altar of incense, again, directly related to the cross. You see, hon, the work of the cross simply never ceases because the work of the cross is the work of the eternal spirit of God. It's the working of Christ in me and in you and it never ever ceases. And then the altar called the Ark of the Covenant, the altar of mercy, the seat of mercy directly, once again, directly related to the cross. This baptism, this Christ into whom we are baptized makes our baptism an exceedingly, abundantly, extremely great baptism that there, that there's nothing like it. There's nothing really that, com, that can be compared to it, though there are many types and shadows of it. In Mark 10, he calls it his baptism. Mark 10, verse 38, but Jesus said to them, and I know we're taking all, I'm taking, I am taking all of these little excerpts out of, out of their, uh, out of their context. <clears throat> uh, I can only tell you and guarantee in you I am not violating that particular context by doing so. Uh, we're simply trying to stay with the view of baptism. Uh, but Jesus said unto them, No, you, you, you do not know what you ask. Can you drink of the cup that I drink of and be baptized with the baptism and, and, and with... Can you drink of the cup that I drink of and with the baptism that I am baptized with all shall ye be baptized. His cup and his baptism is that of which we become partakers through our union with Christ. These things are not separate from him. But it is really a work of the Spirit of God that takes place in our soul. <clears throat> and it is a tremendous work. Uh, it's a, it's, it, it is an ongoing work that we certainly are not going to be able to exhaust in any number of classes or any number of open forms. But I, I want to just point that out to you. And, and I have a reason for doing that tonight. We're going to talk a little bit at least about adoption. And what we're seeing here is that the new birth doesn't just relate to Christ. It relates to us. The new birth is Christ. Hun, he is the sum total of it. The new birth is Christ himself. Yes, it is Christ in you, but it is Christ. <coughs> Nonetheless, because Christ is the new birth, whether I receive him or not, it just means that if I don't receive him, 
then I am not born from above and I have no part in the kingdom of God or in anything else of God. There's no way I bring definition into the new birth. There's no way any believer brings definition into the new birth. And yet the new birth relates to every believer. That is most certain. It's the same with baptism. The baptism is lock, stock, and barrel, Christ himself. But it, but it speaks of a union with Christ that that speaks of that speaks of his body a union with Christ first corinthians 12 12 and 13 for as the body, see, when we're dealing with the body, when we're dealing with baptism, the concept of the body of Christ is dealt with. This baptism is actually necessary to Christ having his own body. Extremely necessary. Look and I'll show you. For as the body is one, and he's talking now about, most scholars agree, the human body. For as the body is one, though it also relates to the spiritual body of Christ, the body that you and I are. But the example here. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, or one body, so also is Christ. How so? How so? For by one Spirit are we all baptized, are we all, no one left out of this in his coming to Christ. No one who is in union with Christ is left out of this. No one who is a member of the body of Christ is left out of this baptism. This is the baptism <coughs> by which each of us had to come. And it wasn't left up to us as to the method it is the method of the Spirit of God himself. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, we have an and and in addition to that, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. Those who are baptized then are made to drink into that very spirit. But the, the line here that I just wanted to mention, whether we be Jews or Gentiles. That takes in all of the races because there's Jews and then the rest is Gentiles. Like it or not, darling, that's the way it is. You can be brown or yellow or black or white or <coughs> Gentiles. Gentile. So it takes in all of the races. It takes in all of the colors and backgrounds and all of that whether we be bond or free it takes in all of the social uh, positions uh, and, and, and much more than that 
It is speaking of a whole creation. Now, one of the times that I first read this years ago, it hit me. Man, what a baptism. What a baptism. And the reason it hit me is because I had read that if any man be in Christ, well, you've got to be baptized there. All things are passed away. That means completely done. They're not recognized as being there. Out of it. Behold, the new has come. Well, it is Christ himself who is the new. But then I'd also read concerning that new creation that it was so new that it was neither male nor female, Jew nor Greek, bond nor free. Male nor female, Jew nor Greek, <clears throat> bond or free. Now that has to be at least part of the old that is done away. At least part of it. I know it gathers much up, but we're talking about baptism right now. And I've got a reason for emphasizing this, and then I'll probably be, we'll, we'll, I'll go to, with Rabin, and then we'll, we'll go a little farther. What a baptism. What a baptism. <clears throat> this is. <clears throat> you start out as a Jew or a Greek. And when you end up, there is no Jew. The Jew they're, 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 it's gone. You start out as male, female. But in Christ... Where we're baptized, there isn't any such thing. It doesn't make any difference how you come to this baptism. It's not going to be the same body. It isn't going to be the same person, the same man, woman, boy, girl, the same creation. that is going to come forth. A totally different, not, not just the other made better, no, no members of the Lord's body called a Jew or a Gentile. No members called a bond or a free. No members called male or female. None of that in his body. Rather it is Christ all and in all. <coughs> what a baptism. Romans 7, verse 24, Paul makes a statement. Now, we're not going to get into the theology of Romans 7. Oh, wretched man that I am. This is a realization to which the law brought him. It's a realization to which the law brought him. All right? Oh, wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? The body of sin. The body of being dead in sin. That's what he's been talking about. Who shall deliver me? Romans 6, same baptism into Christ, 
Same baptism. Romans 6, verse 3 and 4. Here's, here's Paul's answer. Here's my answer. Here's your answer. Here's how you can start out a Jew. And end up the body of Christ where there is no Jew or Gentile. Here's why anyone can come. It doesn't make any difference who comes. It's who remains. And hun, in this baptism only one remains. Now, I, I, I've just remember, Raven's going to, He's got a, something he wants to read to you in a minute, or at least I want him to read it to you. Because this, this thing is with permanence. Ah, <laughs> uh, know ye not. See, they're having a problem. You know what? I don't know whether he was with us yesterday or not in our service here but I mentioned again and again and again because it was the only thing that was really on my heart the only thing and I mentioned it it was just this the only thing the only thing the only answer God has for me and basically and eternally the only thing that I really need as a soul in union with Christ I need to see him I need to know him I need to see him that's my need I need to know him. And that gathers into itself, I need that he be revealed in me. I need that he begin to possess my soul in the fullness of himself. All of that's gathered into it. But it's very simply said, I need to know him. Well, now, all of my life in this gospel, which has been very close to all of my life, but for a long time, in this gospel, I have faced and I have dealt with many believers who have faced. How do we live this life? Well, of course, the answer is you don't. Christ lives it. But see, to the natural mind or even to the, to the believer who has not really ever come face to face with their new birth, face to face with their baptism and face to face with the only begotten ever living son of God then me saying you, you need to see Jesus I realize this sounds like a put off but hon it's not it is not it's the answer of God to our soul. Not only that Christ dwelled in us, but that the Father reveal Him in us to the very fullness of Himself. And that is an ongoing work. Our baptism is facing our baptism Coming to acknowledge our baptism is part of that work. New birth is a work of the Spirit, but then the Spirit works the new birth in us. Baptism, a work of the Spirit, but then the Spirit begins to work the baptism in us. Adoption, a work of the Spirit, but then the Spirit begins to work the adoption in us. It's a work of the Spirit. Salvation is a work of the Spirit. Let us, please, let us not miss this thing. But there's only one answer to those who say, well, I know Jesus is in me, but I just can't, you know, I'm not even going to start making comments on that. I know Jesus is in me, but I'm having a very hard time uh, with this, or I'm having a very hard time with that, or with somebody, or whatever. All of these kind of things. I know Jesus is in me, but my but the way I live just doesn't line up with that. I don't feel that it lines up with that. What, what is the answer? How? I really believe the answer is baptism. And here's the way I say it.
The answer is that you need to be rebaptized. Yeah, you, you haven't got any idea what I'm talking about. I mean, you go back and see Christ as your baptism. The answer is the cross, honey. But all of this is gathered up there. You need to be rebaptized. Let me read it. Let me read it. When I say rebaptized, I mean I mean you need to face your baptism again. You need to see your baptism in the person of Christ again. You need to be rebaptized. Know you not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Darling, really, the only answer. See, God didn't, he didn't give Christ as the answer and then have a lot of amendments to that. That's that's the law. It's got all kind of amendments to it and all kind of concepts to it and, 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 and all of that. But not God's answer. That answer is once for all and final. It's our comprehension. It is, it is our soul needing to eat his flesh and drink his blood. It is our soul needing to know him as only the Father. It is seeing the salvation of the Lord. <clears throat> because we're not talking here about the academic knowledge of our mind. We're talking about a revealing of Christ that literally, virtually, transforms our soul because it is an appearing of Christ it is an appearing of he himself you are baptized into his death see hon My answer, the answer to me, me not being able to do this or me not having this a right attitude or whatever, is not to get a better attitude. My answer is death. That's, that's my answer. The acknowledgement of truth. I am dead. Not academically, not as a stated doctrine, not as a teaching, not as what you're hearing right now, because you're hearing a teaching. No, I mean a genuine, spirit-wrought revealing of my baptism, revealing of Christ, revealing of Christ as my death. That's what I need. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? As many of us as were baptized into Christ were <coughs> baptized into his death. There's, there is the end of the body of death. But Paul is saying here, you don't understand that, do you? Do you not know? And he says that in all of his epistles I would that God God would enlighten your soul. And he says it in much more vivid ways than that. Read it in the epistles, son. Therefore, being baptized into his death, therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. 
Right now I'm very much involved in that reality and in that study and looking at that reality and praying, oh God, let this reality work in me, the burial. Because it is from it is in the burial that this great transition takes place. The burial is also a work of the Spirit. Honey, do you realize that the whole cross was a work of the Spirit that he offered himself by the eternal Spirit? I mean, they didn't go out and find him hiding under a rock and drag him up and kill him. He offered himself by the eternal spirit. It's a work of the eternal spirit in our soul. All of this so that, like as Christ was raised up out from among the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. That's what people are asking. How can we walk in newness of life? comprehending <clears throat> our death and comprehending our baptism and by the same spirit comprehending him in his resurrection. All right. Oh, well, good. That's a good place. Because... Uh, the, the verse that we dealt with, uh, one of the things that you said earlier, and then I'll get to this, but you, you didn't read this verse. I'm sure you have it there, but uh, Galatians 3, <clears throat> 27. Yes, I do. It's right there. I Many as you are baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Yeah. And then the next verse says, there is neither Jew. And, and the literal translation says, there cannot be Jew nor Greek. Or slave or free, there is neither male nor female, for all are one in Christ. Now that's not a bunch of people trying to become one and have fellowship with one another. No. Uh, you know, saying we're one in Christ. That is the result of the baptism you're talking about. It's about being baptized into his death. It's about all of these distinctions that's mentioned here being brought. I've been looking at the door lately, but basically it's that, being brought to the door and being put away. That's it. And beyond that door, or in that door, the only one that lives is Christ. And it's understanding that to be our baptism, that to be our state of being in Christ. And what you just said about knowing him as our death and... I think simultaneous to that or, you know, it's not subsequent to that, but simultaneous to that, knowing him as our life. Well, yes, it is. Um, Now, you know, I always look at that order, but listen, this is the verse we talked about last time or I brought up last Monday uh, where it talks about the like figure or meaning we have the anti-type of the baptism of Noah that is demonstrated in Noah. <clears throat> and that baptism wasn't just being dipped and uh, you know gotten wet. This was the this baptism he's talking about was just the the washing away of of everything that God looked at and said it's evil continually, and it can't be anything. It's that which is contrary to His nature. He couldn't relate to it, and He put it away. He He destroyed it by by the flood, and. Peter talks of it as the baptism we have. And he says that this is the baptism that doth now save us. And you said, who shall deliver me from the body of death? That's the same Same thing. Same thing. It's the same concept, saving and delivering. It's the same thing. And he says this baptism doth now save us. And he's he's very uh, quick to say it's not a fleshly outward thing where you're washing your body. It is the answer of a good conscience toward God oh, yeah. by the resurrection. And you just said it is seeing him as the resurrection and seeing him as our death. And, and I think that's what it's talking about. And, and I kind of brought up what I had searched out about the word conscience where it's two words, which means a, a knowledge that is joined to something. It is 
your knowledge is either joined to that which is put away and still trying to make that acceptable or it is joined to the one who stands before God and lives and is our resurrection. It's either seeing him or seeing me Amen. is basically what it is. My knowledge of my relationship or standing with God is either joined to his face or it's joined to mine. And to basically, the baptism has to do with that. Uh, as you said, baptism, when we first come to Christ, we are baptized into his death. I mean, that's the work of the Spirit. But then it's this baptism and the judgment of that baptism being wrought in our heart yes. that brings about this conscience or this joining of an understanding to reality, to what is and, and what God has brought about in new birth. That there has been this, this putting away of the first and the establishing, even in, my, in me, of that which is new, and that which is newness of life, which is another life altogether, Christ yeah. being that life. And, and, uh, but I was going to, you know, and, and uh, we could say a lot of things about the conscience, the evil conscience, the good conscience, but I was going to say, and I don't know, you may disagree with this, but the order seems to be, because we know a lot, of, a lot of times people get the order uh, wrong. So they spend... The majority of their life, their Christian life, attempting to attempting to do what the baptism has already done, yeah, or attempting to get God to do what He's already done in baptism, and that is, you know, uh, uttered by the words, "We've just got to die," or "We've just got to die." Well. Yeah. You know, we're saying you have to face this baptism. You have to experience this, his death. But when I look at this, a, uh, because if you'll look at the King James, especially the baptism that doth now save us, everything else other is in parentheses except for by the resurrection. So you can say the baptism that doth now save us by the resurrection. Yeah. So that seems like a weird statement when you take the parenthetical statement out. But it's true. To me, it goes to what Paul says in Philippians. And the order was always weird to me, but it's true. To know him first in the power of his resurrection. And that is knowing the one who lives now. And I think I can go back to this example of Noah. Knowing the one in whom, who has found grace in the eyes of God, who stands righteous before God as opposed to everything else in that first creation. He stands there having found grace in God's eyes and now after the flood stands as the head and the identity of a new creation. And to me, in the seeing of that one who is my life, who lives unto God as my righteousness in life and has made unto me everything he is, then in that, in that, there is the judgment of this baptism. That everything other than him has been put away. Has been destroyed by the, by the deluge of the baptism, you could say it that yeah, way. You know? yeah. uh, one of the, one of the translations, or the definitions of the Enhanced Strong's Dictionary actually uses the word, you know, a lot of them put submerged and all, it uses the word overwhelmed. And I thought, man, that's a really good, uh, that's a yeah, good word. It is. You know, it is. It's, overwhelmed. it's overwhelmed. It is. It's, yeah. it's totally overwhelmed. That whole thing is, is swept away. And it, it, it can't stand. And, and that's the way it is when you see the Lord and the reality of that true baptism comes into your heart. It can't, nothing can stand in that. Nothing can truly stand up and, 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 uh, stand against oh, can't remain to that baptism and uh, it hasn't in reality but I'm speaking of the realization of it coming into the soul yeah, yeah but uh, can remain but to me that's that's the that's the whole thing of this conscience and it, it's the soul finally coming to the to the acknowledgement of of that baptism that realization of it
Well, you're, you're right, uh, and, and you're right too. We hear, we've heard people for years say, "Well, you know, I need to, I need to see that I'm dead." Uh, I, I known I knew one brother years ago who who sought uh, fellowship with us, and we give him an open door for it. But he then he found he couldn't function with us. Uh, as a ministry in ministry couldn't function with us because he he wanted to teach everybody that they were dead without Christ being revealed in them and and I I remember one time sat with him for what was close to eight hours between six and eight hours uh, going around and around and around and finally I just left it with him you, it's not seeing. It, 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 we see Christ when God reveals His Son. He reveals the living, resurrected Son. Mm -hmm. But in seeing Him, who is our baptism, our burial, who it, you know. Right. We come to realize and see in seeing him who is our life, as you just said, none lives but him. And I realize it, 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 it becomes a reality. Then I really am dead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? uh, yeah. and, and we, in trying to relate that truth to others, sometimes it, in, in preaching the order of it, uh, then, you know, yeah, it, it does seem like we're telling people, well, you you got to see you're dead, and then you've got to see you're buried. No, you've got to see the truth as the truth is in Christ. And he is the truth, and the truth is that none other lives but him. And it is in the light of his appearing that we are able to comprehend, that we are able to acknowledge that that I that I am not I am dead. Uh, we begin to understand the testimony of that is laid that is set forth in the scriptures, uh, and then and then buried, you know, buried with Him. It's 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 like it's like when we see Christ. It's rather like He just takes us into himself and he shows he who is life, he who is revealed, shows to us his death, his burial, his resurrection. But you only see that in the face of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He must be revealed. God is not going to reveal death to you. He reveals his son in you. He isn't going to reveal baptism to you. He's going to reveal his son in you, and and that's one of the reasons that, and I'm 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 really glad that 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 Rabin made a point out of this because it, it is it's it's uh, uh, it's we have the open forum so that we can at least sit here and discuss with one another. But I mentioned to you when I started that every one of these terms have Christ. As their reality, their substance, ev everything, uh, and it is only in Christ being revealed in us that we can comprehend new birth. Only in Christ being revealed, because it is in Him that we face the truth, the judgment, the grace, the mercy that is involved in. Well, in in this in in the new birth or in the baptism, and certainly, certainly, in the adoption that is so so misunderstood by so many, uh, many actually believe that because the adoption is there, and sometimes you read commentators, you come up with about the same idea that God is running an adoption agency. <laughs> But anything that is born of your seed would 
couldn't fit that picture. Right. See, so adoption, though it relates to us, is finds its fullness and fulfillment in Christ Himself. We were, but it is true. One of the examples I don't know if even this it, to me it does. When they came, talking again about baptism um, and the realization of that and the judgment of it and, and all of that, uh, I was thinking about when after the flood, when they came out, the first thing was he built an altar yeah. and sacrificed. And to me, that was him acknowledging what had just took place. To me, it was acknowledging the end of one thing because because in that the Lord smelt that sweet savor and said I'll never again destroy yeah. or I will not destroy this creation you know in other words what the first has been done away this is an altogether new thing I will never touch it like I did that I'll never destroy this this will stand and, and I wish that everyone could understand that and to me that's what uh, that altar is about it's about the the acknowledgement of the first being put away and the second being established in one man. To me, that's, that has to happen in the heart. It is, and it has to be about that creation, the new creation. Right. Because it had as its sign the rainbow. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel, he looks at this man in his first chapter, yeah. and the sign of that man, around about that man, is this rainbow. Mm -hmm. And this rainbow is the expression of the glory, you know, Absolutely. of the glory of God. And so it is. That otherwise what would be the you know, what would be what would be the reason? I mean, God actually uh didn't destroy the planet right. even then. You know. Uh I'm sure there were trees and vegetations that escaped. He was talking about such as had in them the breath of life. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and so you're right. I mean, uh, that's the whole type and shadow there. That's the whole thing. Uh, there is that that represents a creation uh, that God will never destroy. Mm -hmm. It's an eternal thing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Well, our baptism... It is a tremendous reality of Christ being worked in our soul. And when I say that the answer to me, I mean the answer to the old man, the answer to who I am by natural, my, that is death. Is death. The, 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 the answer uh, to my soul is another living in me. It is, it is Christ himself. And that's God's answer. That's God's answer. But the realization I have, it is not just, it's my, God's answer to me is not just Christ giving me life. It's not just let me go ahead and say it this way, Christ living in me, it is that only Christ does live in me. There's so many ways we could maybe say this. But throughout the scripture, we, we agree on, we, I'm sure you will agree with us, you who search the word, that over and over and over and over again, even where Raven was talking about here, I mean, there stands Noah, one of the greatest types of the Lord Jesus Christ and new creation that we have given to us in the Bible. Noah, the called over in the New Testament, the eighth. Noah, the eighth man. <laughs> My God, that's like the that's like the eighth. Sabbath, that's like the, I mean, you know, <laughs> that's Christ. Behold, I make all things new, the newness of everything, Christ himself. So God's answer over and over again 
to his people, those that he is dealing with, is to bring in a fresh view of his son. And I think that he always does that according, directly according to the need of my soul. To see that son as the father reveals him. The father knowing the need of my soul. Knowing my heart, because I certainly don't, but the Father does. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Are we out of time? I sure think so. A couple of minutes, two minutes, I think so. Oh, have we? Well, then we don't have time to get into the to, to the adoption. Read what you read on, on the baptism. This is, this is good. Oh, I have to get, let me get back to it here. Because it, it's going to tell us, or what I, when Raven read this to me, what I said, I said, well, yeah, whatever, we're baptized, we stay baptized. If baptized into his death, we die, we stay dead. He, he, he alone lives. All right, this is uh, from the Enhanced Strong's <clears throat> Dictionary here. And it's, it's under that heading that uh, was actually the word overwhelmed. And he said it's not to be confused with Strong's number 911, bapto, which means just a dip. He says the clearest example that shows the meaning of baptism in this word is a text from the Greek poet and physician Nicander, who lived about 200 BC. It is a recipe for making pickles and is helpful because it uses both words. Nicander says that in order to make a pickle, the vegetable should be dipped, which is bapto, into boiling water. And then it should be baptized, which is baptizo, in the vinegar solution. Both verbs concern the immersing of vegetables in a solution. But the first is only temporary. The second, the act of baptizing the vegetable, produces a permanent change yeah and that's man that's tremendous because what, what are we talking about know ye not that so many of us as we're baptized into Christ we're baptized into his death now that's a permanent thing. buried with him by baptism into death yeah hence I am crucified with Christ. Yeah, that's Paul's, <laughs> thank you. That's Paul's I am crucified with Christ okay. statement. Yeah, yeah. And not I, but Christ liveth, because that's the resurrection. And that, and there's a lot of believers who, who just don't understand that. We have a precious brother in this fellowship, uh, one of the elders of this fellowship for years. Uh, his name is Wayne Ballard, and he and Betty live in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, and Wayne called me one time, and he, he, he just, a lot of times when he'll do that, he'll just kind of give you a word bite. But he called me one time, and he said, uh, I've been thinking about it. And he was talking about believers now. He said, you know, we're not a, it's not that we're afraid to die, we were, could we've been discussing the cross and, and what we're talking about now. He said, it's not so much that we're afraid to die. We're afraid not to live. Yeah. And that hit me and I said, Wayne, that's one of the most profound little statements that I have ever heard. You're right, brother. If... Our whole teaching on resurrection in the church, I mean, you hear it, whether people are Christians or not, everybody that dies, well, don't fear, don't worry, they're going to live again. We teach an afterlife instead of a resurrection. A resurrection is not an afterlife. It's not me living again, it's Christ living in me. Yeah, I recently heard uh, someone talking about Jesus' resurrection. And says that the whole, the true point, and the thing that made the resurrection of Jesus Christ 
as powerful as it was, is that it was a picture and a promise that we too would soon have our resurrection. <laughs> oh God! And see, I know how they translate that 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 verse. Uh, if in this life we have hope only, we're of all men most miserable. Well, I'm thinking you know, what he's saying there is if it, yeah, this life, me living, natural, yeah, me living. I mean, if me living now, if me living again, if me living is if, if this is what it's all about, then why well, then I am most miserable. No, 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 no. The whole miracle of resurrection is it's Christ living in me and Christ living in you. Blessed be the Lamb of God. Well, I, uh, I, and I know, you know, those who fight for their own life hate to hear that, but then Jesus said, if you seek to save your own soul, uh, you're going to lose it. You're going to lose it. But if you'll, if you'll forsake it, if you'll forsake it, well then, you, you have eternal life. And that life is Christ himself. Blessed be the Lamb of God. Our baptism, the greatness of our baptism in, in Christ. I think maybe, and I, we're out of time here, but I don't know but what that, the term, the washing of the water of by the word the washing of the water of the word may be the ongoing results of baptism yeah. because it washes away takes away it's like the flood mm -hmm. it's like the flood uh, and it is an overwhelming thing as well Absolutely. it's an overwhelming thing well the Lord bless you friends it's been good to join with each of you that are with us and and uh, you who are with us live tonight and in those who will uh, also be with us uh, through the recordings of, of this session. Uh, some are not able to be uh, in front of a computer or a TV screen, uh, whichever you're using, uh, <coughs> on Monday nights. But they, they tune in at some other time uh, to the open forum and... Uh, uh, it's been good to just be with you, and we look forward to it uh, again and again and again. Uh, listen, Jim, we got your emails, but we got them only, I only read it, in fact, today. Uh, perhaps we'll be able to uh, at least mention something about the question that you ask in those uh, in our next Monday night forum. All right? The Lord bless Good night.